In this video, I'll give a demo of my version of the week nine assignment for drawing with code, where I'm making a self-portrait with code. Now, I actually started this in Illustrator by making a 400 pixel by 400 pixel file to match the size of the canvas I'll be using in P5JS. So from there, I used some really basic geometric shapes, ellipses, rectangles, lines, triangles, things like that, to flesh out a simplified self-portrait. Now, you certainly don't have to work this way, but I find it convenient to be able to work graphically versus just sort of guessing or thinking a little bit more mathematically about how all these shapes are related to each other. Some students prefer drawing out on graph paper instead, and that's just fine as well. Whatever works the best for you to flesh out your composition. So you can see here, really the same kinds of approaches that we've been covering through the last unit of vector drawing with setting fills, setting strokes, working with layering and overlap and Drawing it out like that is gonna make it really easy to translate right into code because we'll have all of the pixel coordinates of all of the shapes. We can just take those numbers right into the code. So at this point, I'm just about done. Just drawing out my beard. Tried a few different shapes there. And I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm bringing in my P5 editor and I'm starting by making a version of the layers that I made in Illustrator in my code, just with comments. Now, one thing that's different about drawing with code versus drawing with Illustrator is that the layer stacking is reversed. So things that are at the top of your code are farthest in the background. Things that are at the bottom of your code are farthest in the foreground. Now from there, I'm using the transform panel. So I get to that from clicking window transform in the menu bar, and that will show me the pixel locations and dimensions of all of my shapes. Uh, so I can take a selected shape, look at it in the transform panel and pick out whether I want the center point or one of the corner points and as well as getting the width and the height. And I can just transfer that information right into my function calls in P5. Now, similarly, I can go into either my swatches panel or my color picker and copy the RGB color numbers to get the exact fill and stroke colors that I used from my template, bring those right into P5. And you'll notice as you're building up a composition in this way, the patterns between shapes, especially when you have symmetry. So these two are aligned vertically, they just have different horizontal coordinates. So almost the same exact code for one ear versus the other ear. And pretty much for each shape, I'm prefacing it with fill and stroke settings either turning the fill on or off, setting a fill or stroke color, uh, setting a stroke weight, setting end caps, things like that. And the reason I do it for every single shape is that it makes it easier to rearrange parts of my code if I want to. Um, so if you remember from Dan Schiffman's tutorials, the fill and the stroke settings will affect anything in the code after those commands are made. So it's a good habit to get into making fill and stroke settings for each shape that you draw. Right now I'm setting up an arc for the base of the nose shape. And I found that this was a little bit hard to translate from the transform panel. So what I actually ended up doing was remaking an ellipse, getting the width and height dimensions and translating that into an arc. So very similar to what we covered in the how to draw with arcs in P5 demo video. And you can see here, I'm copying in the little lip line arc that I made by drawing out a full size ellipse and then I can use that and convert it into an arc in my code. And I had to do a little bit of guessing for the start and stop angles to get it to look right. For the eyebrows, I just drew out Bezier curves using the Bezier function, almost exactly the same as what we cover in the how to draw Bezier curves in P5 demo video. And then for the uh, hair shapes, I have four almost duplicate Bezier curve shapes that I drew out with a pen tool. And I'm building these up exactly how I did it in the how to draw it with Bezier curves demo video, uh, just using begin shape and end shape and copying in the coordinate locations of the anchor points and the control handles. And then just getting my smile lines. And that's it, I'm done. And so to turn this in, make sure that you save your sketch. 
and then give me the URL of your editor. So you can copy that right from the address bar, or you can go to File, Share in the P5 Editor menu bar and copy the link for Edit, and that's what you turn into Canvas. Have fun.